Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Santa's Gift and I'm sipping on some hot cocoa and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today I'm going to be using stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you could certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, fire red, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number three round synthetic brush and I will most likely refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same types of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. Alright, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be drawing an outline of the gift and Santa. I'm going to be using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers and what will end up happening is we'll have some very big basic shapes that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. We're not going for any fine-tuned detail or anything like that, just trying to section off some really large color block type of sections. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to draw an outline for my um, for my gift, the present, the box. So I'm going to find myself the center of my canvas, left to right, top to bottom. So for me, the center of my canvas is somewhere in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up from that about two inches, give myself a little marker, and then down about five inches. So this, this distance is about seven inches. And then I'm just going to connect these with a vertical line. It doesn't have to be super straight, just something that'll get us started. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another line the same length as this, about four inches to the left of it and a little bit higher. So what you want to do is kind of come up maybe about an inch and then over to the left about four inches somewhere in that vicinity and then up about an inch from here and then over about four inches or so somewhere in that vicinity it doesn't have to be perfect just somewhere close will will help you get to the same to a similar place that i'm at and then just connect those two markers and then i'm going to do the same thing oh and i'm thinking this might be um, a little bit more than an inch let's see here i might just give myself a little visual here yeah, it might be like a little bit more than an inch high, higher than that, but <laughs> it's not going to matter in the big scheme of things. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the right of this about six inches or um, let's see, six, uh, like three or four inches from the edge of the canvas in that direction. And then I'm going to come up at about the same, maybe um, inch, inch and a half above that. So somewhere in this vicinity and do the same thing down here. Come to the right and then up about inch and a half somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to connect these, something like that. And I'll show you 
with my measuring tool if this side is higher than the other side, which it's not. These two are about the same height from, one in, from the top of the canvas. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to here, here to here, and same thing down at the bottom. So just a long diagonal type of a mark, another diagonal type of a mark. And you can see I'm just really loosely sketching, doesn't have to be a really tight line. This is just something that's going to help us through the painting process. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from here. I would say almost halfway between here and the top of my canvas, so somewhere about here, and then over to the right about an inch, somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to connect here to here, similar diagonal line, and then here to here, another diagonal line. So we've just made a real basic shape for our box, our present, whatever you'd like to call it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... Um, an outline for the sleeves and the hands or the cuffs of the um, of the jacket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this bottom right corner or the bottom center corner and I'm going to come up, up up the line about an inch, inch and a half, something like this. And then I'm going to come down from this corner, I would say maybe about an inch and a half, make myself another marker. I'm going to connect these two with just a loose curved line, little slightly curved line, not a big one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this corner of the box and come down about an inch and a half or so, somewhere in through here. I'm going to connect here to here with a big awkwardly kind of looped type of a line. This is going to be the exterior edge of the cuff of the sleeve for Santa's jacket. So just kind of following this. I'm really close to the edge over here which is at about the same height as this corner, maybe a little bit lower. And then you can just loop this down maybe an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half away from the bottom of the canvas, something like that. I'm going to do the same thing over on the right hand side. So I'm going to come in from here a little bit farther than that side, so maybe almost an inch and a half to two inches over here. And then I'm going to go about halfway between here and here, so somewhere about here, and down maybe an inch, inch and a half. And then just connect those with a very slightly curved line like that. Now I'm going to come up here and come down you know about two inches somewhere in through here and this one is going to go off this sleeve is going to go off my canvas so what i can do is i can just go up just a little bit and then just kind of ripple this down off the canvas there i can come up from the bottom of my canvas here maybe about an inch or inch and a half and then i can give myself a big loop down here or a curve line down there for the bottom of the sleeve now we're going to separate out what's going to be the beard from the shoulders. So I can come, if this is halfway, top of my canvas halfway, I'm going to go almost quarter way over to here. So quarter way is about here. I'm going to go just shy of that, maybe by about half of an inch. And to show you where it is from this corner, it's in maybe about an inch and a half, somewhere in through there. And then I'm going to come over into this, the uh, edge of the cuff like this and then I'm going to connect here to here with a long just wavy kind of line something like that and on this side I'm going to do something similar I'm going to make my first mark somewhere in through here so again if this is halfway and this is quarter I'm a little to the left of that so maybe about two and a half three inches from the edge and then this is going to connect right in through here so to the left of here maybe about an inch and a half two inches and then again just connect it with a nice long wavy line and that's all i'm going to be doing for my outline you could certainly make any little adjustments you feel are necessary i'm going to be using my large paintbrush for the next step so you can just get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting a base coat onto the canvas i'm going to be using my large uh, bristle brush to paint but i'm going to use my small round in order to pre-mix a custom color so I am going to be using black, brown, red, and white for this step. I'll be painting the base coat of what will be the background behind Santa as well as the base coat of the red part of his jacket. I'm going to paint that um, with a base coat of black. 
the beard and the cuffs and these little pieces of the hands, I'm going to do a base coat of gray for those sections. And then the box or the present, I'll do a base coat of red. So I need to make myself my custom gray before I start painting, which I have magically already done on my palette here. So you can see where I'm headed. How I got to this is mostly white. And then what I did was I added a little bit of brown and a touch of black into it in order to give myself a medium to light tone of warm gray. And I call it warm gray because if I had just used my black and white, it would have been on the cooler side, which steers a little bit towards um, like a bluish type of a color. It's not really blue, but <laughs> a, a, a cooler type of a color. I want some warmth in mine, so I just added a little bit of brown to it. So that's where I'm headed. And I'm gonna paint my sections from the back forward. So I'm gonna start with my black sections first, which are gonna be um, this area that kind of goes down behind um, all these little gray sections. So something like this. I don't need to do any fancy brush stroke with, um, especially with this black paint because the black is gonna cover really well. So all I really need to do is just kind of color in this exterior section that we had outlined um, and had not given any other details to it, just kind of outlined it. So this is gonna be fine for that. I am using black as a base coat for some of the red sections uh, or all of the red sections of the coat because I want the coat to kind of look more um, like it's a kind of a deeper, richer red than the wrapping paper that's gonna be on the gift box, so I'm opting to use a dark background for the red that's going to be in the jacket. So as I'm planning out what I'm doing for these paintings, I am considering how the paint is going to be affected with the colors that are underneath it. So I can use one color, be it the red, and if I put a different color behind it, that will change that tone of the red because red is gonna be transparent. So I, I know this going in, so as I'm planning what I'm gonna do with these basic sections, I can use that to my advantage. I can say, all right, well, I've got a red coat that I want to um, do, but how can I simplify my outline for, these, for, this, for this base coat, this block-in type of, um, type of a step? And that is one way that I can do it. I can, say, all right, well, I want to use the base coat for the coat. I want that to, even though my coat's going to be red, I'm going to use black as my base coat for that, as well as for my, my little sections of background. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and the next sections I'm going to do are my gray sections. So I do want to, as I do these gray sections, be mindful of this line and this line. So as I get to the, oops, I don't necessarily need to, uh, paint in my box either. Um, as I get to those areas, I can just leave a little of the evidence of where that um, that line meets the top one. And then as I'm going through these sleeves, I don't need a perfect line as it's meeting the, the black color. It's almost um, beneficial for me to make a messy line as it meets that, well, not, not on the hand, but um, on the cuff itself. It, so if you're going through this and on that cuff you have a messy or a soft line, that'll be an easier transition when you go to paint the, uh, the fluffy sleeves as opposed to a super clean line. But if you, if you do a super clean line that's totally fine, but um, just a little a little trick. <laughs> if, you, if you do it a little bit messier where you want that fluffiness to be, it'll um, It'll allow you to get a little bit fluffier look out of it. And then on the box, of course, I'm just going to ride it down the side of that uh, pencil mark. And same thing with in through here. And then when it goes to the edges where it meets the black, you can just mess it up a little bit on the edges, something like that. And then where it's at the hand, which is just this bottom little finger in through there, you can give that a little bit cleaner of a line. And this whole section in through here doesn't matter what your brush stroke is because you're not going to really notice it or need it at this point. We're just going for a basic color in through here and then 
when it meets this black, you can certainly, again, just have a softer line if you want to. If not, no big deal. And then at the top, this is gonna be the beard section. So first I'm just gonna kinda hit the edge right by the box. I keep wanting to call it a book, and <laughs> it's not a book, it's a box. But if I do accidentally call it a, a book, just know that's what's in my head right now. <laughs> I don't know why. It's it's sometimes I, my brain struggles to come up with the with the right words that I'm supposed to be saying. It wants to say something totally different. So if something else comes out, then I apologize. So once I've got that outline done, I'm just gonna. This is uh, the beard look. I'm gonna leave. Oops. Let me just get that black. I'm gonna leave just a little evidence of that line, and then in through here. This is similar to um, what you did with the cuff. You could certainly kind of leave it softer. This is gonna be where you're gonna have lots of texture to the beard, so don't don't feel it necessary to do anything fancy right now, just getting the whole color on there. But if you wanted to, again, on these edges where it meets the black, if you intermingle it a little bit or leave it with a soft edge, that's totally fine. We've got the jacket that needs to be put on first before we finish the beard anyways. But if you did bump into that black or you left it on the softer side, that's totally fine. And then once I've got this done, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I will hit the, um, the present box. Just get this nice and flat so I don't have any bumps in it. There we go. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And the box itself, I'm just going to color in with wet red paint. And I know that my red is very transparent. So I'm gonna be able to see that pencil mark underneath my paint. So I don't even need to stay away from it like I did here. My, my paint may have covered up that line and I wouldn't have been able to see it later. But when it comes to the red, my paint is super transparent. So I'm gonna see that outline right underneath it. So don't shy away from painting right over that because we'll, you'll be able to see it and you'll be, we'll be able to use it to our advantage later. If you used chalk and your line was gonna disappear, then you could leave a little evidence of where those corners are, um, just to help you through the, the process when it comes to doing details for the, um, the top of the edge of the present. But if, if your paint dis or if your guidelines disappeared, it's okay, because I will, I will guide you through remaking those edges when the time comes. And I'm putting pretty clean lines down these sides. Um, they don't have to be super clean at this point, but the because it is a present and I am gonna have um, smooth edges to it in the long run, if you start those smooth edges now, great. Um, that'll, again, just help you. My, but I am using a bristle brush, which doesn't have the best control for, for edge work, so I'm gonna just you know do it the best I can and fix it later when I do all of my little my little details so I'm just going right to the edge here it's tough to do it upside down like this there we go we got it all I need to do is just get that brush to work the way that I wanted to and then I'm just going to color in this piece here and you're going to see streakiness in my red simply because it is transparent so wherever there's areas that are thicker than the other it will it will show that um, that line and this top corner and this top edge is going to be covered a lot by the um, the bow that we're going to do later so again if you don't get it perfect even after we do the details to it don't worry because you can once I just spilled red paint all over myself um, you can you'll have the opportunity to hide it with a big a big holiday bow later. <laughs> and I'm just kind of going down these sides. And then once I get to this little corner, I'll slow down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this bottom edge in through here. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash. Let me just get this little section in through here. Wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the red parts of the jacket and the second coat on the box. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are definitely red, brown, and white 
and maybe a little bit of black as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to section out where um, like his shoulders are going to go and then we're going to be using our red paint to strategically add wrinkles and form to those shoulder and little bits of the arm area. We're going to add a red section down at the bottom which will um, re represent the bottom of his or the you know the lower portion of his jacket. Later on we'll be putting a belt and stuff in this area but I kind of want to have that dark red as a nice foundation. And then on the present we're going to do different shades of red in these sections so we can give it a little bit of a dimensional element. So I'm going to start with my jacket. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of red on my brush and what I'm going to do over here on the right hand side is I'm going to just come come to the right of my beard a little bit, somewhere in through here. And then I'm gonna come about halfway between here and here, something like this, and then just give myself kind of a ripply line in through there. The arm is, picture it going out like this and like this. So we're gonna, you could potentially see a little bit of the forearm in through here. So I'm just gonna put kind of a brighter area of red in through there. And then what I can do with my red is I can get it nice and heavy up and through here and then just kind of pull it down as if it's almost kind of um, going into little creases underneath that beard. So you can even just pop, like um, touch it into the beard a little bit. So what's happening is it's just going to get a little bit darker as it goes next to that beard, just showing that it's got some form on this outside and then I'm just going to pull it in like this. This area in through here we're going to consider that to be a little bit of the forearm and you don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot. I might come back and add a little bit more to it but that's how I'm going to start. This is going to be just add a little bit more in through here. I just wanted this one to be a little bit brighter in order to show um, that maybe this is the forearm area. Maybe a little bit more in through here. And the more red you put on top of this black, the more it's going to um, get brighter and brighter. On this left hand side in through here, this one I'm going to just give myself just a little tiny sliver up in through here of black. So that'll represent, you know, the background. And then down in through here, I'm just going to come up to about here, give myself a little bit of a line. And this whole section in through here is going to be his arm. So again, if his hand is here, his forearm is in through here. So I can just take and maybe put a lighter area in through here. And this red can, I see more of this forearm than I did of that one. So if I give this directional brush stroke in through here, it's going to lead the viewer to understand that this is the forearm. And then up in through here, again, I can use my directional brush stroke in this in this way saying that oh well the the coat is going over this kind of um, form on his arm so I can use that directional brush stroke in order to explain to the viewer what's happening with this cloth so that's all I'm going to do right now for this I might come back and add another little layer to it but that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna, it will dry a lot darker than it is when it's wet because of the black on the background. Um, down in this corner and through here, we're gonna consider this to be like his hip area. So I'm just gonna put a little line of red in through here. And then over on this side, just somewhere middle of these guys in through here, I can just pop a little bit of red in through here. And then again, this is gonna have a waist band with, um, some of his fluffy gray stuff but I do want to give the implication that it is his um, his jacket so I'm gonna just pull down some red streaks like this in through here and I'll do the same thing over on this side so I'm using this downward um, brush stroke again in order to explain to the viewer that this is cloth it's going to because I'm using the black behind it it will naturally give me these light spots and dark spots so it is going to resemble cloth and because I'm giving a directional brush stroke it's allowing for me to explain that there is form to it. So that looks pretty good while that's drying I might do another coat on it but 
I'm pretty, I'm, I'm digging what it's looking like right now, so I might not need to do anything more. I'm going to put, well, except for over here, I'm going to put just a little bit more on these guys over in through here. I feel like I could use just a little bit more brightness over in through there. And then I'm going to, on my, on my gift box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red and brown to create a little bit darker version of the red. And then I'm going to be using that on this section over here. I'll be making it like a darker red here to a lighter red in through here. And then on this section, I'll go a little bit darker in through here and lighter up here. And then we'll make a light, we'll, we'll make it lighter up at the top. So I have pre-mixed myself a little bit of a darker version of the red. I don't want it to go too much darker. So all I did was I took a good amount of red and just added a tiny bit of brown to it. You don't need to add much, just a little bit it will make it a, a maybe a shade or two darker without having it go too, too dark. And then what I'm going to do is once I've got that color, I'm going to start in this uh, bottom right hand corner of my box in through here. And just remember, we do have another layer that we're going to be doing on and more details on the box. So this is, again, just something that helps that building process. I'll put it down in this bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to pick up my red to transition just a second layer on the rest of that section of the box. So I didn't wash my brush so what's going to happen is these colors will start to blend together and then you can you can blend them whatever way you want go left to right back and forth we'll just give them a nice easy simple transition from one to another and again you saw I went outside of my lines, which I'm okay because I'm not done yet. And I do have, you know, my, my um, cuffs and sleeves and stuff to go. So I'm not concerned about that. Just I want to have more of this nice blend on the box. So that's where I'm going with that. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that dark red. And I'm going to put it in this area down in through here. Again, I didn't wash my brush. So whatever happens, if it's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than I had anticipated, I'm okay with that because I just need a little transition of, uh, of a gradient from one corner of the box to the other to give me that dimensional element. So that's fine for me. I think I'm gonna put just a little bit more of this up this seam where the two corners meet and that'll help again to just visually allow the viewer to understand that there is a corner to this box. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna keep picking up red to finish out the, this particular section of my box. So just a little bit more red on my brush, finish, finish out that section, and it's wrapping paper. So if there's bumps and it's not a super perfect blend, that's okay too. And then at the top of my box, I'm gonna start with red back here, and then as I get towards this front, I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my brush. So just a second layer of the red back in through here, like this, and just bring it right to the corner of that box. And again, I didn't wash my brush, so I just saw a little bit of that brown is releasing itself from my from my brush, which I'm okay with. And now right in this front area here, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red and a teeny tiny bit of white. When I say teeny tiny bit, I just mean a teeny tiny bit. <laughs> and then I'm gonna get this a little bit lighter in this front little section. Wipe my brush off on my paper towel and then just blend it back. So this just looks like a little bit of a gradient in through here, not a, not a bunch of difference, just something a little bit um, showing us a tiny bit of a gradient. And if it went too much, just pick up a little bit of red and you can dull it down with a little bit of red. So not a big deal. You're gonna have a big shine at the end or the corner of this box anyway. So that's a great start for us. And then we're gonna be using um, I'm going to probably use, well, do I want another layer on this guy? Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, wipe, wash my brush, wash and dry my brush. I think I want a little bit more red on some of these, uh, areas on the jacket before I move on. So I'm just going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my red. I didn't want the white on it, so that's why I just washed and dried it just to make sure that I've got these areas as much as I want. So you can just keep building that red until, cause I'm gonna do, I think my beard next. So I wanna make sure that I've got this, this coat taken care of 
especially where it's going to hit the beard. So that looks good. Just needed another little coat on and through there. No pun intended, but a little bit, <laughs> a little bit in through here. There we go. That's, that's looking as dark as, or as bright, vibrant as I wanted to. And then just hit it with little, maybe just a little tiny bit more here. <laughs> you can never get enough red, right? And it, again, it'll dry a little bit darker, which is why I just kind of wanted to give that a minute to, to settle before I decided if I was going to um, want any more or not. And then a little bit more up in this corner in through here. And then I'm going to be using, I think I'm going to use a combination of my bristle brush. It might just be my bristle brush, but I'm going to call out my bristle and my, uh, my medium round just in case I want to use that one too. But I think it might just be this large bristle brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and just get this little step, this little section here and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a fun beard, <laughs> Santa beard. I'm using my, uh, my large bristle brush. I might tap into my number eight round, but I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, the colors that I'm gonna use are gray, brown, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So uh, obviously this upper area is Santa's beard. I want it to overlap into, um, over his jacket. It is gonna be behind the present. So anything that happens here, a lot of it is going to be hidden by the bow on top of the gift. So we just need some color behind it with maybe a little bit of implication that it's hair um, or a beard, but we don't really need to do a ton. I do want it to have some dimension, so I'm going to be using my brown with my gray in order to get some movement to appear in the beard, and then we'll add some nice lightness with, with the white. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my gray and my brown on my brush at the same time. And I know I want to have a little bit of um, darkness maybe as it is meeting other areas such as the, the cuff in through here. I just want to get a second layer in through here. So just kind of bringing it down to that gift in order to um, make sure that I've got a little bit of um, visual information with the with the color variations. I would avoid kind of going too left and right uh, for too long. If you go too much, just kind of bring down a couple of um, vertical pieces so it doesn't look like you've totally outlined that box. Um, but you can certainly, uh, you know, touch that box if you need to in order to get around it because again we're going to do it one final layer on that box. So now that I've got that accomplished, now I just want to give myself some movement. So I'm going to be ar around the rest of it. So I'm still picking up some gray and brown. And you can really have this as curly as you want. The, my, my biggest goal here is just to kind of give myself a natural edge coming out and um, crossing over where that jacket is. So I'm just kind of bringing some little pieces out in through here. You can, you know, make it super curly if you wanted to bring out some, some fun little pieces like that. But again, just brown and gray is where I'm headed with this just to kind of bring out some little pieces, trying to make it look kind of nice and carefree as it's crossing over, but allowing it to um, just kind of make sure that I've crossed over that edge so it doesn't look awkward like I missed any spots. And we've got the cuff that'll help to cover this in a little while, so just bring that down as much as you want. And again, you can bring out little flyaway pieces if you want to, it's totally up to you. So now that I've got all that movement, along those edges. I'm going to put a little bit in through here. So have fun with however you want this to um, translate as, you know, Santa's wavy beard, if you will. And then once I've got that on with my gray and brown, now I can start building a little bit lighter pieces. So I'm not going to pick up, got to pick up my paper towel first. <laughs> I dropped it on the ground. I'm not going to be picking up any more 
gray at this point. I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I want, I want to get some of that gray off. I want it to look a little bit more luminescent. So the gray is going to push the shadows into the hair. Now I'm going to pick up white with a tiny bit of brown. So white with a tiny bit of brown. And again, just a little itty bit. And this is where I can say, okay, I want, I want some extra little, you know, pieces of his beard kind of coming out here. Maybe there's an implication of a little mustache or something up at the top so you can pull it down even more. My goal is to just not overpaint it. So I've got these light pieces kind of coming down in through here along with my bristle of my brush. Um, but I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. We've got this fabulous uh, dimensional element happening and I know I'm going to have uh, my present is going to be on top of it, so I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot, just kind of adding some fun Santa curls, if you will, and once I've got that done, you can, you know, fiddle with it as much as you want. You could even add extra white if you wanted that top portion to look like it has um, more light at the top or that the light source is up at the top or whatever, whatever you'd like, but I'm thinking that that's looking super cute right now. It's got lots of movement. Looks like Santa's got a little bit of curl to his hair. Maybe just pop out a couple of little pieces over here on the edges. And then once you've got this done, you can, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. I feel like I even, I like it lighter over here and darker over here, like maybe the, the light is hitting it him more on this left hand side. So actually I'm adding a little bit more white over on this left hand side. I'm thinking that it's giving it a good um, transition uh, and telling a little bit more story ab about that light source. So that's where I'm headed with this. And then I'm gonna um, use my, uh, it's looking cute. <laughs> I'm gonna use my medium brush for the next step. So you can put this brush away, take out the medium round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to be putting the belt buckle on and the edges to the jacket underneath here. I'm gonna be using my number eight round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are gray, black, yellow, brown, red, and white. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I feel that on Santa's jacket there's he, the material that's used on the cuffs also, it's like he's wearing a robe type jacket. So I feel like they line kind of the front edges of it. So I wanna put a couple of, a little bit of that material in through here. Then I wanna put a belt going, um, holding his jacket together. <laughs> but the belt is gonna go kind of underneath the, um, I'm gonna call it scarf pieces. <laughs> or the edges of his jacket, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but the belt kind of wraps on the outside of the jacket and then maybe tucks into those little edges of the jacket. You'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick up some of my gray on my brush and I'm gonna put the edges of the jacket in place. So I'm just gonna pick a little spot in through here and just kind of give myself, it's gonna be the same material that's on the cuffs of the sleeves. So I'm just going to kind of tap this in to this um, section in through here. It's going to be kind of shadowed underneath the hand. So up in through here, you don't really need it super bright and we'll adjust it in a minute, but that's how I'm going to start it for now. I'm going to do the same kind of uh, application over here on the right side, just giving myself a little section that's maybe an inch, inch and a half wide and just kind of travels up. Again, think of this as just the, the edge of the coat that's gonna keep them nice and warm, but it's shadow, it should, it'll be shadowed underneath this box. So I'm just gonna kind of tap this up in through here. I'll darken it in a minute up there and maybe lighten it a little bit down below. So while that's kind of settling, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up black paint to put the belt on. You can have the belt as big or as little as you want. I feel that Santa probably has a pretty wide belt, <laughs> but that's totally up to you. I'm gonna just um, kind of mark it in through here, maybe drop it down 
a little bit here and just give myself a little bit of a curved line like this and then down at the bottom in through here. And I'm just gonna color this in with a thin coat of paint because I want this to dry pretty quickly for me because I wanna put a belt buckle on it in a minute. So I don't, black covers really well so you don't need it to be super thick in order to cover it and just giving it um, that little bit of a, of a coat. And then over on the sides, I'm just gonna take it wherever it kind of meets over here and then just bring it up in whatever way that you want. You can, you can imagine your Santa's waist to be different than mine. That's totally up to you. I'm gonna just bring this up in through here and then just paint this whole section with black. So you might have more room than I do. You might want your belt to be thinner than mine. You might not even want to have a belt. It's totally up to you. I, you know, we, I put the jacket on and gave that a little bit of information. And now I'm, I'm putting the belt on. So you can, you can build your Santa's waist <laughs> whatever way that you want. Just making sure that this makes sense. Kind of coming over on this side. And we could be seeing it cinched. We could be seeing it, you know, full on straight. You could be seeing it in a bunch of different ways. So just imagine it whatever way that you'd like to imagine it. Maybe you want to make your belt gold. <laughs> whatever color works for you is fine by me. So while that black is settling, I'm going to go ahead and do my detail on these little fluffy parts. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to give it that shadow, similarly to how we did the beard, I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness up at the top of it because I feel it's shadowed underneath that box. So I'm gonna pick up, uh, I think I'm gonna actually go gray with a touch of black to do this. So just a tiny touch of black, make it look a little bit different than the beard. And I'm gonna just tap it up at the top. So I've got a little bit of shadow up in through here. That's where it's gonna meet that finger and the finger is going to cast a shadow as well. So just kind of tapping this down, get it to blend just a little bit, something like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side with a little bit of gray plus a touch of black. Again, this is just adding a little bit of shadow to this piece as it's underneath the, um, the box like this. And now I'm gonna pick up gray plus white. So this is going to give me a little bit of brightness as it's coming out into, you know, away from that box or down farther so the box is not um, putting as much shadow on it anymore. And I'm gonna cross it right over that belt, make sure I've got some little fluffy edges around or on top of that belt. So gray plus white is gonna give me my little brightness on these guys in through here. And again, you can make them as bright or as dark as you want. You could even pull out the bristle brush to do this little tapping uh, stippling that I'm doing right now. I just know I'll use this brush for, my, for the rest of the belt, so it works out for me, but if you wanted to do use a different brush, that'd be fine. And then once I've got that on there, now I'm going to finish my belt. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And for my belt, I think I just wanna add a little bit of um, a streak of a highlight so it's not totally flat to his body and then I'll add a little belt buckle. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and gray, so black and gray, and just kind of give myself just a little, little curve in through here. And now I'm picking up a little bit more black, just something really subtle. I don't need it to do much, just something really subtle to just give me the information that it's not just a flat black, um, that it's got maybe, maybe it's leather, maybe it's got a little bit of shine to it, because I think everything Santa has is shiny. <laughs> He's got magic on everything. So something like that works for me. It's not flat, it's got a little bit of something to it. Now I wanna add my belt buckle. So I'm gonna add just a simple kind of rectangular belt buckle. Um, I have pre-mixed myself, we'll call this like a brass type of a color. How I got to this was brown and yellow. That's gonna give me almost a greenish type of a color. And then what I did was I added a tiny touch of red and a tiny touch of white. So this just gives me kind of a neutral metal type of a color. And then I'll use this 
to add some, a little belt buckle. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna kinda of come down this left hand side like this. And you could also move to your smaller brush as well. I might move to my smaller brush as well if, I'm, if I can't get this the way that I want it, but we'll see how I do here. So I've got that and then just a little kind of simple line at the top that's above the, um, the belt itself. So the belt kind of sits inside of the buckle like this. And then I'm gonna take um, and put a little clasp of sorts. So you can put just a little kind of curved line and then a little metal piece like that. And if you were really, you know, into it, <laughs> you can put a couple of little holes over the side. That would be totally, you know, an extra if you want to put that in there. And then I just need to add little tiny details. I am actually going to switch to my smaller brush. So I'm going to switch to my number three round in order to get my little details on this belt buckle. So um, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of uh, my brass plus white and just give myself these little kind of highlights on the um, shiny parts. <laughs> just kind of give myself a little streak down like that, like this. So I don't want to take up as much area as the original um, line or mark that I had put. And then on these little guys, I can just put just a little tiny, tiny light area. I can now pick up a tiny bit of black and put a little tiny shadow underneath this clasp right in through there. And then if you felt you wanted to do anything else, if you felt you wanted a little shadow on the belt itself, you could certainly put a little shadow or clean up any edges. And then we're going to be using our, um, I'm going to use this same my number three round for the next step. So once you've got your this area done, you could wash and dry the number three round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the hands. I'm using my small number three round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, gray, and white. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to first kind of section out the hole from the sleeve and give myself a little bit of a road map where I want the fingers to be and then we'll go ahead and place some strategic highlights and shadows in order to make it look like we've got a, you know a, a set of Santa hands with his nice gloves on. So I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on my brush in order to give myself just a real sketchily kind of outline of what I want to do here. So I'm going to come about halfway between the top of my cuff and this corner here, give myself a little bit of a marker. And then what I'm gonna do is where this finger kind of meets the cuff in through here, I'm gonna come in from that maybe about a half of an inch. And then I'm gonna connect these with a real big sketchily just kind of looped um, type of a shape in through here. So this will separate the exterior part of the um, cuff with the hand itself. I'm gonna put a little bit more brown on my brush with a touch of water, just so I can, again, keep with that sketchily type of look. Uh, I'm gonna come in from this finger here and bring this up a little bit like that. That's gonna be one finger or like the outside of that hand. And then I'm gonna kind of extend this also. Uh, I don't think I wanna do that. I'm just gonna extend this to um, inside the sleeve. You could put a little sliver of the hand on that exterior side, but I really don't think that that's necessary. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna go with this, this one line right from here to here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into um, the this little corner in through here. There's gonna be a thumb in this area. So I'm gonna just kind of come up here a little bit and then just kind of bring it right over that corner of the present and bring it back like this with a little bit of a curve in through here. And then this finger, I'm just gonna have underneath the, the present. So this is not gonna overlap. That's just gonna be underneath the present. I'm gonna go over to the other side and do a similar, a similar process. I'm gonna take uh, from, again, 
I would say somewhere maybe halfway between this corner and this corner, somewhere in this vicinity. Um, let's go a little bit lower, somewhere right about here. So maybe about halfway between here and here. Put a marker and then down in through here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Gonna come in here, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, somewhere in this vicinity, give myself a big sketchily opening for Santa's hand to come out of. So something like that. And then I'm gonna, again, just put a little bit of brown plus a touch of water on my brush. This hand I'm gonna have um, coming in through here. So this finger right in through there is gonna be one finger. I'm gonna just pull this down like this and bring it up in through here. So that's gonna give us kind of the look of two fingers. And then we've got the thumb coming right over this corner of the present in through here like this. I think I want this um, this finger right here to also cross over the present. So I'm gonna bring this, give myself a little bit of a curve in through here. So that'll give us a different um, position and look than the other hand has, which is always a fun thing to do. This is the thumb that'll just kind of bend around in through there. That looks pretty good. So now I don't need to wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna paint the inside of the sleeve with a little bit of black. Where it meets the um, my outline in through here, you can just kind of do it in the messy way because there's gonna be a, um, that's gonna be the fluffy edge to the to the sleeve, but the interior where it meets the hand, you can certainly make that pretty clean looking and you can just it doesn't even have to go all the way jet black you can just or Mars black <laughs> you can just rub it in and just have it whatever dark tone happens will totally work and then do the same thing over on the other side I'm gonna just bring this in right to his glove like this and then just paint this whole section and so again doesn't have to be anything fancy just something that's gonna give you that darkness um, going underneath or into the sleeve. So something like this, covering up my brown outline. That works for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add all the shadows into the hands and then we'll add the highlights. So the shadows I'm gonna be doing with black and gray. So I have black on my brush right now. I can just pick up a little bit of gray I want the underside, anything that's underneath the gift. So this will be part of this finger is gonna get a shadow in through here, something like that. And I can just work it out. I have a ton, I have almost too much black in my bristles, so I'm just gonna wipe it on my paper towel. Um, so I put the dark on in through there, and then I just start picking up gray in order to come out of the shadow and blend in with the the rest of the finger. So something like that will work. Picking up a little bit more gray just to come out of the shadow. And I can also use this gray right now in order to clean up any edges. Um, like I have some red from the, when we hit the jacket, I can use, I can use right now just my gray in order to, to uh, cover that up. So that works pretty good. I can even put a little shadow underneath this thumb that's gonna be there in a minute. So something like that. Just that darkness in through there and then use that gray in order to come out and clean up any, come out of the shadow and then clean up any edges that might um, not be fully executed. I need a shadow in here where it's dipping into the palm of the hand, as well as where it goes into the sleeve. So again, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black and my gray. I'm gonna put my shadow in this little crook in through here, and then a little bit up in through here, right as it's going into that sleeve, something like that. And then I'm gonna pick up my gray to work my way out of that shadow and just get it to blend in. So I'm using a little bit of a circular motion on my brush and I don't necessarily always use the tip of my brush when I'm doing these little blending um, process. Sometimes I use the inside of those bristles. I kind of push it and use like this firmer part on the inside 
I have a tendency to blend in a strange way I think sometimes but it works for me so I just do what works for me and then I just keep picking up my gray in order to come out of that shadow give myself a second coat on this thumb as well as cross over into that present so I'm going to bring it right on top of my brown that little brown outline was just a guideline for me so just going to bring this right out here and these are gloves so if your fingers don't end up looking perfectly proportioned it's okay we'll just say that there was bumpy gloves he had really fluffy gloves or whatever on. so don't feel it's got to be perfect and this is just a fun holiday painting so there's the pressure is off so that's good i'm going to do the same process on the other hand and then we'll come back and add some strategic highlights in order to give this a little bit more form and get these uh especially this thumb to pop out a little bit more so over on the other side i'm gonna again pick up my gray plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint i have uh this finger right in through here this bottom finger is going to get pretty dark this little inset right in through here is going to get pretty dark like that just bringing it right up to that present um, I also have, I think I'm just going to kind of paint this little finger almost all dark because it's, it looks like it's pretty much shadowed with the box, the hand, <laughs> and everything. I'm going to pick up some of that gray now. I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, just uh, pushing just a little bit of that gray. I do want to be able to see this against that um, that belt area so whatever I have to do either make it lighter or darker so I can see that finger a little bit I'm going to pick up more of my gray just to get this finger while I'm here and again just bringing it right to that um, outline that I had created I feel that there will be a little bit of shadow underneath here so gray plus a tiny bit of black just to give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath here but I don't need a ton so I'm going to pick up more gray just to it to have it there but not have it go as dark as the little shadow I did for the other finger and then just kind of again making sure that I've painted the whole thing oh, he's gonna have an extra little bump on his finger there we go um, even this bottom side of this finger could be a little bit darker but I'm gonna just use whatever the remnants are on my brush and just kind of make sure that I have that second coat because I am seeing I am detecting some some of my red popping through right now so I just want to make sure that I've got that so my little thumb here I think is going to cast a, sh a little bit of a shadow on this finger too so let's see if the knuckle is going to be somewhere in through here I'm going to just put a little bit of a shadow in through here we've got that the part of the thumb in through here maybe somewhere like that and then we've got little shadow here a little bit underneath here and then definitely in this little uh, inset of the palm in through here bringing it right up to that present and they don't the shadows don't all have to be exactly the same color that's why I'm using two colors on my brush at the same time so that will give me that um, that uh, ability to have multiple tones uh, without it looking too flat um, and allowing for it to have some good dimensional elements. This is right underneath that sleeve. So the sleeve will cast a little bit of shadow on the hand, then picking up more of my gray in order to come out of that shadow and to make sure that I've got a good edge right next to that gift. And we do have one little final step on the gift too. So if the edges aren't perfect yet, I've planned for that. We'll have, we have a step where we can make them perfect. And again, I'm just adding a second coat of my gray onto the whole thumb. Make sure that I've got this area that crosses over the present accounted for. And you can add whatever kind of shapely thumb that you want. Yours might look different than mine. Whatever works for you is totally fine. And then once I've got that on there, I just need a couple of strategic highlights in order to um, give these hands a little bit more form. So the highlight I'm going to put on the top. So that's going to be whatever part of the hand is coming out towards the top. So that's going to be the top of this thumb. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and brown. So the brown 
you can use again similarly to how we did the beard and so it doesn't go too white too fast on you um, so I'm going to just use a little bit of, uh, of white plus a touch of brown in order to give me this highlight where I feel the thumb would pop out the most so it's going to be like the top edge of it and then just kind of maybe maybe the knuckle has a little bit more highlight on it and then it just is going to disappear behind or in in that sleeve I feel like I want a little bit of a highlight kind of on the hand itself as it's coming out so like where the knuckles maybe are in through here and you really don't have to do a whole heck of a lot. The present is going to be the thing that draws everybody's attention. But if you feel that you want, you know, to keep amping this up, I feel I need a little bit of a crease too uh, in the inset of the thumb. So I'm going to put that on in a minute. But this is, you know, they're gloves. So, <laughs> you know, you don't need to, to do a whole lot of detail. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my gray plus a little bit of black. I feel like I need to put a little bit of a... Um, kind of wrinkle part on that thumb. Yeah, that was totally necessary. <laughs> Just that little tiny bit gave me that that you know um, thickness on the on the cloth of the glove. So just those little itty bitty things. I like that thumb. Um, I feel I need to put just a little bit more, maybe um, on this section in through here. Maybe get this. To just pop out just a little bit more where those knuckles are and then just give a little bit of a wrinkle on that glove as it's going underneath that box something like that that looks pretty good I'm going to move on to the other hand so do the same thing white with a little bit of brown on my brush to start that highlight and just a touch of brown on my brush there we go I got it now um, and again in the areas that you think are going to pop out the most so this is going to be this section of the thumb and I'm just kind of rubbing it on um, allowing for it to give kind of a, a smooth type of transition into the darkness of inside the um, the sleeve so something like this and then just a little bit more on this fingertip in through here and then I definitely want um, some on this fingertip so I think I'm going to go all the way white on this little guy in through here and it doesn't have to be the whole thing you know just where you feel that it would be popping out the most to the viewer and if you wanted there to look like there's wrinkles in that glove you can just take and kind of add these little almost um, lighter streaks and that's gonna allow for it to look like there's little there's little wrinkles in there I'm gonna do the same thing with the inside of the thumb I put a little bit of black and gray on my brush just to give me this little wrinkly part coming out from that palm area and then if you felt you needed to or wanted to do anything else certainly you know fiddle with it as much as you want I might um, I'm thinking that that looks pretty good but I need to see it from a distance so I might I might fiddle with it a little bit more um, but I'm thinking that it's pretty good at the moment uh, and then we're gonna be using we're gonna use this same small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this small brush if you can ever stop a little extra highlight over here <laughs> wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the cuffs on the sleeves I know I said I was going to use my small brush, but I changed my mind. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I figured it would be smarter to finish the cuffs before we finish the present because the cuffs are behind the present and I know I'm going to bump into that present. So I'm going to finish these cuffs first. So I'm going to use my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, gray, and white. And if I use a little bit of brown, I'll let you know, but I wanted to be a similar color palette to what I did here. And here I just used gray, black, and white, um, just so it looks different from the beard, but you could of course do the same color combination like we did in the beard, but that'll be up to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put shadows where they need to be, and then highlights and texture. 
So I'm just considering my light source to be up above. So my highlighted areas would definitely be on the top side and maybe coming down a little bit. And then on the cuffs down in through here, I'm going to have the bottom is going to be pretty dark and the inside will be pretty dark, but I want there to be a little bit of a highlight coming in through here so it's not super flat. So we'll be doing some highlight there too, but definitely some shadowy stuff as well. So a little shadow underneath here and here and then at the bottom. So I'm going to start with my shadowy stuff first and then I'll build my way to the light stuff. The biggest trick here is to just never have a lot of paint on your brush. It's an itty bitty bit. So I'm going to pick up just a teeny tiny bit of black. See how teeny tiny bit of black <laughs> and then a teeny tiny bit of gray. So just a tiny bit of both and this is going to give me my shadowy areas. I'm probably going to put a little shadow underneath there as well. So I'm going to start like down at the bottom and just kind of dot in. I want it to overlap my clothing so or that jacket so that way it will make it look like we've attended to all of the areas and haven't missed anything. And if you need to pick up um, or use a smaller brush when you're doing this, feel free to do so. But I'm just kind of tapping it. You can see how it's kind of fluffing out on the edges, which is exactly what my goal is for this fun sleeve. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit up and through here. So again, just an itty bitty bit of black and an itty bitty bit of gray. I think I, this is actually too much for this little area, so I'm just going to tap it off on my paper towel. I can always add more paint, but it's tough to take it away once it's on there. So just tapping this in. I'm going to hit my box by accident, <laughs> but I knew that that was going to happen. So that's good in through there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other sleeve. So a little bit of gray, a touch of black, get hit this bottom area. And again, I'm okay if I bump into this little black area. I'm okay if I go over the edge because that's what's going to make it look fluffy. So I'm not scared of that. And again, if you feel like in these little tiny areas that you wanted to go into your medium brush, feel free to do so. As a matter of fact, I think I need to. This is a really tiny area for my big brush. <laughs> I'm picking up my number eight round right now and I'm picking up some black and gray just so I can get this little area. And I want it to look different than my fingers. So if I need to, I go just a little bit darker in through there just so I can make sure it's got a little bit of a shadow pick up a little bit more gray just to transition out of here. And then as soon as I can switch back to my um, bristle brush, I will because my round is too systematic for me and I want there to be um, some carefree natural diversity here. So I've got better texture. So now I'm switching back. <laughs> so I don't didn't want to use that round for long and then just kind of tapping this in down at the bottom like that. And then I'll do the same technique up at that little tiny top part right in through here. So just a little itty bitty bit in through here and then just kind of tapping it real gentle. I don't need to do much. And again, I'm okay if I bump into my, um, my present because I've got, I've got another step on that. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to start adding the highlights. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and this is going to be white with my gray. I'm going to take that, that black off of my brush. I'm going to pick up some gray plus a little bit of white. I can be more liberal with the amount of paint that's on my brush for this um, application because I'm working in a much larger area and I want it to be fluffy looking. So, And I'm just tapping with the tip of my brush. I'm not smushing it in really hard, just kind of tapping in order to get the bunch of little speckly type of marks something like that will work. And again, I'm starting with gray and white. So I have room to build to my white. So I will get that extra highlight on the top by using just white in, in a minute after I've got this layer on. So I'm just kind of making sure I've got good coverage everywhere and that it doesn't look like a solid color. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing over here putting a little bit of this right in through here. I don't need to do much. And then just kind of making sure that I've got good coverage. I've got a second coat on the whole thing, just kind of tapping 
with those remnants on my brush, making sure that I've covered the edge where it's meeting that red. So uh, gray plus a teeny bit of white. So right in through here, I've got red overlapping my, my cuff, which I don't want. So I'm gonna just kind of tap this in over here. I'm gonna go right in front of that beard in through there. That looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna go back to the other side and add my final highlight. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in for just white. This is where you could really make it super fluffy. You could make it look like it's got longer kind of um, fluff on it, fluffy fur, <laughs> but I'm just gonna go for a, a dotting, stippling type of um, fur. I'm gonna make it really bright up here at the top. And then as I come down this side, I don't want it to go all the way down the side with that brightness. So I'm just gonna kind of go more towards this left over here and then maybe kind of bring it down this edge in through here. So just kind of limiting the amount of place that you put that super bright white will allow for more um, information as far as like the light sources and stuff like that. So I'm putting it pretty heavy up at the top and then just kind of um, minimal down at the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right hand side. So lots up at the top. You can you know load your brush pretty well and then just lightly start speckling. I'm just tapping my brush very lightly in order to get these million little speckles <laughs> as I go through this. And then I'll just bring it down a little bit down this side, but I don't need to bring it all the way to my hand because I'm, I'm thinking that this is, you know, it kind of turns in a little bit as it goes into that sleeve. So, and even coming down in through here, maybe just a teeny bit as it's, you know, making its way down in through here. And then I would just let it dry, see if there's any more I wanna to do to it. And if so, I would, <laughs> if not, I'll just leave it alone. But you could, you know, if you wanted to add brown to it, you could add brown to it to give it that, you know, similar color as the beard. But I'm thinking that I'm digging the way that mine is looking. So I'm gonna call it. And then I am gonna be using my small brush for the next step, I'm sure of it this time. So you can put this large brush away, take out a small round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the box and put the base coat of the ribbon on. I'm gonna be using my small uh, number three round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are red, brown, white, and my brass. And if I need to go into any other colors, I will and I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be cleaning up my box, making sure that all of my edges where I might have overlapped them with other stuff, make sure that those are attended to. I'm gonna be putting a nice highlight on the edges of the, the top of the box. I'm also gonna be putting a lid on my box. So I'm gonna put a area where my lid meets the regular part of the box. And then we'll be using our brass color in order to um, put the base coat of our bow on. So I'm gonna start with just red paint in order to clean up my edges. I don't care too much about the top of my box except for these edges in through here as well as the little edges over here because that's gonna be covered by my bow. So I just have red paint on my brush and I see this little area in through here that my beard got away from me, so I need to make sure that that's cleaned up. Same thing with over here. Just make sure that that's cleaned up. And then I'm just gonna go around the box at, with my red paint, um, making sure that all of my edges where I might have bumped into them with a previous step, just make sure I've, I've got that taken care of. So this was one of those steps I knew what I was gonna um, need to account for because of the order that I painted these objects in. And you just plan for stuff like that. You know, I, I, I knew that I, I wanted to have um, the original or the base coat of the box on and started just so I always maintained a visual as to what was happening with that present while I was putting the other objects into place. But, um, so that's why I did do two coats of it first. Um, again, so I could just 
have that information where everything was going to be sitting and if I needed to adjust the size of the box or anything like that, having it in place initially um, gave me that liberty and that understanding where I could just kind of watch it as I go. I actually am going to pick up a little bit of my dark red. I didn't say I was going to use the dark red, but as I'm coming down towards the bottom of here, I see that I need to clean up these lines and it would be more um, beneficial for me to use that dark red color than any than the than the light red color or the regular red color. So that's where I'm headed with this. So dark red down at the bottom, just kind of closing up these little edges. So that looks good. I'm going to now, um, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up some brown paint to put a little separation where the uh, lid is going to meet the, um, the regular box. So I'm going to come from this corner, come down maybe about two inches, somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to go for, on this corner, come down about two inches from here, come down about two inches, and then just connect my dots. I don't need to do anything super perfect. Um, just kind of taking it and giving myself a diagonal line. It can be a clean shadow because we're just doing the lid to the box and it doesn't stick out very far. So you can just do a, a slender, um, oops, I just stuck my hand in some <laughs> red paint. Um, so you can just do a slender, darker line as that shadow. And that will um, that will work. That'll tell the viewer that it's sitting, that the lid sits away from the box just a smudge, um, and is casting a tiny bit of a shadow on the um, on the box itself. So while that's kind of um, settling, I'm going to go put the highlight up on the edge of the box. This I'm going to be doing with white and red. So. It's going to be, I'm going to have it a little bit stronger on this left hand side. So I'm going to pick up white plus a touch of red and just go right on top of my pencil mark. So I can still see my pencil mark in through there. I'm going to just take this and go right on top of that because the edge of the box can be kind of um, rounded a little bit. So I'm going to allow for that. So white now, that was white plus a little bit of red. Now I'm just going to kind of blend it back that way and then I can also blend it down onto this the the front side of the box so something like this and of course yours could be more vibrant than mine if you wanted to whatever works for you and then I just take that remnants and I can actually do a second coat on this little lid part if I wanted to make this a little bit lighter I could put a little bit of red and white on here and that'll make that lid pop out a little bit more too you could also in this little corner um, where it is going to overlap or where the lid overlaps if you bump this little tiny corner out just a itty bitty bit that's going to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional so right above that red or right above that brown if you pull that corner out just a teeny tiny bit on both sides that'll make that lid well that one's coming out a little bit farther than anticipated that'll make that lid look three-dimensional it's just a little tiny trick and you could also use the red and white right at um at the edge of the rim uh, the edge of the lid as it's meeting that shadow part you could put a tiny bit of a highlight in through there and that'll make it look even more three-dimensional so you can just follow you know do all these little tricks in order to give it just a little hint of a 3d type of a look I'm gonna I have to do my highlight on this other rim so again I just picked up red and white and I'm just gonna go right along this edge in through here and then just pick up a little bit of red to get it to blend down that down in on the side of the box and then just long broad strokes to get it to blend up above so once I've got that on there you can certainly fiddle with that as much as you want I'm going to put the base coat for the bow on so I'm going to be using my brass color I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to have um, just long pieces of it coming down these sides so I'm going to just take about split it about halfway the box about halfway and then just bring my um, my ribbon 
is going to come down. I'm going to do my ribbon maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch wide. And of course, it does not have to be a perfect ribbon. It can be, it can be bumpy. It can have, you know, waves in it, whatever kind of ribbon you want. I, I know that <laughs> the, the, the presents that my, my mom and I have made in my day, they, the wrapping jobs, they are never perfect. So you can certainly have fun with making yours similar to the way that you wrap presents or that your, you know, family members have wrapped presents, whatever works for you. I'm just going to kind of have fun with this and not put the pressure on myself to make it look perfect because I think that's the, the you know, kind of the joy of wrapping presents. Well, of course, Santa's got helpers too. So maybe his presents are perfectly wrapped, but I don't know. Maybe somebody's giving a gift to Santa. Who knows? Down on this corner here, I'm, I'm going to bring this little wrapping, this little ribbon down past the red in order to look like it's going underneath the box. Something like that. Oh, this is going to be a wider piece of ribbon than I thought and then up in through here I'm going to bring it right up to the top of the box and I'm going to have it kind of curve into the center of my box which is going to be somewhere in in this vicinity so I've just got my color I'm going to bring it like this and then just curve it kind of down this edge same thing with over here just take this and curve it right over that edge of that box like this and then the next part's really fun you get to make whatever kind of ribbon you want i'm going to have a couple of different sections to my ribbon so i'm going to have um like this uh front part that's going to be kind of curling at the viewer and disappears like underneath the knot of the of the um bow <laughs> you can have whatever fun kind you want but i will walk you through this one that it's going to look pretty shiny and it's going to have um, all kinds of bends and stuff in it which will give you a good way to learn how to paint some shiny stuff <laughs> i'm going to take it from here give myself kind of a, a curvy line like that i'm going to take it from here bring this over and give myself another curve like this I'm going to color in this whole section with my brass color and I'm going to have shiny ribbon. You could have polka dotted ribbon. You could have striped ribbon. You could have a solid color, really just making it again into something that is appealing to you um, is, is the name of the game. You can use what I've given you as just tools to kind of work, walk through your own process or customize it in your own way. I'm going to go from um, here and I'm going to, I think I'm going to wrap this around like this and then I'm going to bring this up like this. How do I want this one? I think actually I want a couple of pieces on here. I think I'm going to do this one like this. I'm going to have one tucked behind there. Well, you're going to have to bear with me on this one. <laughs> I'm just going to make this one come out like this. This is going to be a similar piece to what I have here. So I'm going to just wrap this around like this. And I just keep re reloading my brush with, with that um, brass color. I'm using this as my dominant color for my ribbons and or for my ribbon, my bow, whatever you want to call this. Um, and then of course, you could, if you wanted a red bow, you could certainly do that and just paint it with red first. Um, I have this, I want to have a little sliver of, a, of another one back here. So I think I'm just going to leave a little kind of um, separation between those two so I know what I want to do. I think I just want to have the hint of another one behind this one. And then let's see, I want to have something in through here. This is this going to be another piece similar to that one, only sit, it's going to sit behind it. And again, I'm having a pretty, you know, fun bow that's got lot, little, lots of um, little elements to it. You could certainly make yours much more simpler than mine. You could just do um, little, um, 
what do I want to do here? I want to do one coming back in this direction. I want one more underneath or back in here. You could have just one circle, two circle, and then call it. But I'm going to have mine with like a couple of different um, layers to it. And that's just the, the direction I want to take mine. I feel like I want another little piece in through here. So I'm just going to have kind of like you're going to see inside of it and outside of it. So it'll be pretty neat for a dimensional element on it. So I think this side back here, I need to have um, maybe that's going to have that. And then this, if that's going to be that, that should be something like that. I think I need an inside piece to that one too. That looks pretty neat. But I need, actually, I think I need more ribbon here because I want to call, cover that little part of the um, of the present. So I'm going to just put some more ribbon in through here. And then I need a, a little bit in through here as well to tie my ribbon together at the bottom. So something like that will work. And then I just want a couple of little pieces hanging in through here. So I'm going to just take this and give myself a little kind of um, end to my ribbon, something like that on that side. And then on this side, I'm going to have maybe I'll put this one forward. So we've got this one kind of coming down in this direction. And I think I want this one past here. See, just make those decisions, make it longer. It'll look like it's got more fill. It's filled in a little bit more. And then once I've got this done, I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the ribbon. I'm using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my brass color, brown, black, red, yellow, and white. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to do, I do have a little adjustment that I want to make before I, before I finish the um, ribbon, and it's up in this corner here. So. I was just looking at it and saying, I think I, I think I need to um, understand this better because <laughs> I kind of did this area on the inside. I'm like, I'm not quite sure what that is. So I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my brass color and what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this off in through here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make part of this is going to be the front of the, the ribbon. Part of it's going to be the the inside of this piece of the ribbon and then part of it is going to be um, just another ribbon behind it. So I'm closing this little gap off here like this. I can even close this little thing off here. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to um, make this area underneath here dark. This is going to be the underside of this ribbing here. So I just wanted to do this so you understood what I, I knew I needed to make an adjustment, but I had to figure out what it was first. So this is going to be the underside of this big ribbon here. And then this little sliver in through here, which I'll just kind of outline so you can see this little sliver here is going to be part of that back ribbon. That makes sense to me, and now I can proceed. <laughs> so I'm going to wash and dry my brush. Um, I'm going to put a shadow next to these ribbons in through here, so they'll look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown, black, and water on my brush, so I can just have a thin, um, a, a thin line to kind of just roll down this this box. Um, this part dips in where the, the box enters the cover or the cover. So you could make that shadow a little bit bigger in through there. And then I just keep putting a little bit of water on my brush, just making sure I've got um, a nice thin consistency to, to my paint that works out well for me. Um, except for that one spot, but I still have to paint over the, the, um, the ribbon itself, but so black, brown, and a little bit of water. I'm going to do, you could legitimately do it on both sides of the ribbon if the, if the light is up top and the ribbon is away from the object, it could be on both sides. So that'll be your call. If you want this to, this piece to look like it's popped out a little bit, you could also, I'm going to put, um, 
a little shadow underneath here and then you can pull that shadow out even farther so it'll look like that piece of the ribbon is casting a shadow um, on more of an area because it is pulled away from the object. I just put a little bit more um, water on my brush. I can pull these down. These are just little shadows of the, um, the edge of the ribbon. So I can even pull it crooked like that and that'll look like a little shadow of that. Again, black, brown, and a little bit of water on my brush. Uh, so this one I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go left side in through here, pull it out just a little bit underneath the lid and then just kind of ride this down um, the edge with a little bit more water on my brush. And of course this will just give me that little, that little shadow next to the ribbon to give it that little three-dimensional look. I'm gonna put some of this right underneath this guy in through here. So just a little bit. And this one, it, this little ribbon crosses over that piece. So I'm gonna just bring that in through here. And you could, of course, make a little bigger shadow if you wanted it to look like it is farther away from the object. So something like that works. Now I'm gonna start adding shadows all throughout here. Um, I'm gonna start with black and brown, but I'll probably move to just brown as I move um, deeper into it or uh, towards the top. So black and brown is what's on my brush right now. I'm gonna start right in through here. This shadow is gonna go up my ribbon. So I'm gonna just kind of pull it up that ribbon just a little bit in through there. I'm gonna uh, pick up a little bit more brown as I come up in through here. I have too much black on my brush. <laughs> Take that black off. So I just took some of the black off so I can just kind of transition that. A um, little bit more brown and a touch of black is going on my brush to get the inside here. So this is gonna be underneath this piece in through here so it could be sitting on the box and you could also have the shadow in it but I've got this inside piece here I'm gonna pull this in in through here just kind of make a real dark area in through there there's a couple of pieces there again black and brown with a little bit of water on my brush I'm gonna pull um, a shadow underneath this guy onto my box and then I can put the shadow up the ribbon also, <laughs> so it can be shadow on the box, it can be shadow on the ribbon. Um, I'm putting a little bit of shadow underneath this guy too. This is just more brown, just to get that little tiny bit of a shadow on the box itself. And then up this side in through here, uh, this is just the remnants of the black and the brown just at the bottom side of this ribbon. I need a little bit in through here, so black and brown, just kind of give myself these little dark marks in through there. Where else do I need shadows? Um, I want to have shadows in these guys too, but I don't necessarily want them to be black. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to use um, my brown to start. And if I need or want to go any darker, I certainly will, but I just picked up brown. I want to have a dark area underneath this one and through here. So I'm just using brown for my shadow, that works out well for me in through there. I think I can pull it a little bit right next to this guy too. There we go. I'm gonna put it underneath this one in through here. So this is just brown. This is where I can start getting, if I had any little guidelines that were um, helping me through this process, I can start eliminating those and just bringing this right to that other uh, ribbon because this piece here is just kind of tucked behind that one. So I'm just gonna let that happen like that. I want a little shadow um, right all throughout this little center area. So in through here, definitely this back little uh, piece and then in through here. So all these little shadows just help to separate these pieces. This guy in through here, I feel like I just want maybe a little shadow that could be cast from here onto there, or maybe it's I just need it to separate the two. Um, this little little bits will will help me through making this look nice and three dimensional, and it's shiny, so it could be reflecting different stuff on it. Now I also want it to be shiny, so 
shiny is going to reflect everything in the atmosphere, which could be dark stuff. So as the this piece of shiny material kind of curls over, there it might be reflecting different stuff in the atmosphere. So I'm going to use this brown paint and put some reflections on Oops, I have white. I don't know where I got that white from. Wash and dry my brush. Um, I'm going to use this brown paint, and I might even use some red paint too. Um, I'm using this brown paint as reflections on my shiny surface. So this is going to be a reflection of something. So I'm just going to put this kind of uh, darker mark in through there. Maybe this one has it in through here as well. Maybe they all have it in a pretty similar spot. I'm going to put it uh, over on this side. Maybe this side gets it in through here. And then once I've got these kind of darker reflections, maybe I even put um, one up at the, at the top of this guy in through here. That'll get it to stand out even more from my, um, from my beard. Maybe this one gets one in through here. So these are again think of them as these reflections of stuff around maybe this one gets one up at the top too and I'm doing it kind of width wise on that object now I can add, incorporate other colors too Ooh, let me put a little bit of this um, darker uh, reflective color on my um, my pieces coming down in through here maybe this gets it um, in through here maybe there's a big darker area down in through here that's reflecting something. Maybe maybe there's something reflecting on the present there. Maybe there's a, a dark area being reflected on the, not the present, the ribbon in through here. So you can choose these areas to have these reflective marks. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna incorporate more of that brass color and maybe a little bit of red. So brass plus my red can give me even more reflective area. So now maybe I've got, it's reflecting the present. So we've got this warm reddish hue or reflection happening on it. So again, I can put it in several different areas and maybe consistently, you know, in areas that make sense, something like that. Maybe these guys have it a little bit, but maybe not much, just sprinkle it in here and there if you want it to really look nice and shiny maybe maybe it's reflecting santa's outfit his his own clothing so that looks pretty good now i'm gonna um wash and dry my brush and i'm going to put a second coat of my brass color anywhere that it that it is um unfinished so i see that there's a bunch of areas that need a second coat so i really just want to make sure that I don't have anything unpainted. So this go this is, you know, follows my my pursuit in a lot of my paintings as I as I go through them, I definitely have a plan as far as, you know, putting those highlights and shadows and stuff on, but I usually like to hit the object a full second time or with a second layer before I go in for my for my real bright highlighted areas because I feel that if if I don't do this, I run, for me personally, I run the risk of missing areas and not fully painting everything that I should have painted. So this just ensures that I have all areas covered. I didn't miss anything. Like I'm totally seeing some areas that I potentially could have missed if I went in just for my highlights right now. So this just helps me to kind of give everything a good second uh, glance, making sure that I have attended to everywhere and I'm not gonna miss anything. And it just, it, you know, it just helps me through my process. Underneath here, I'm not, still not sure what I'm gonna do with that piece, but we'll, we'll put this second coat on. And then once I put those highlights on, if I haven't, decided to do something else with it, I might just, I might put Santa's beard back. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So that looks good. I'm going to go down this ribbon again, uh, again, just to make sure that I have everywhere painted because right now I can see through it and I can see, um, I can see like the, the line from the shadow where the lid met the box. So I just want to make sure I have good coverage 
And then once I've got this done, I'm going to add some really beautiful sparkly kind of highlights to make this look super shiny. <laughs> we got a good head start with these um, dark areas that I put on, uh, but to make it super shiny, we need lots of bright highlights and that is coming right now. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to create a light yellow color. So I have done that on my palette. How I got to that is yellow, white, and a touch of red because my yellow, the chrome yellow leans towards the side of green. So I don't want it to do that. So I just added a teeny touch of red to it. And this is going to give me a nice kind of soft pastel yellow that will work as a fabulous bright highlight for this shiny material that the ribbon is made out of. So I've got my shiny highlight color and now I pick areas that I think are going to work well with highlights. So for me, it's right along this edge in through here would be a great place for a nice highlight. And then what I can do, once I've got the highlight on there, I can blend it out into the brass color. And it doesn't even have to be a smooth blend. Just something that's going to give me that, um, that brightness where I want it. And then I can, I can even kind of blend it back into that dark area because it's reflective. So I can, I can have, maybe I have a shinier spot down in through the bottom of here. So I just picked up the light yellow, put my, my shine on as it's coming over this corner, and then I can wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of that brass color just to get it to blend in. And now I have this really cool shiny highlight in through there. I'm gonna do that everywhere. I definitely wanna put more in through here and here because I feel that it would really shine as it's going right around the corner here and then just pick up a little bit of my brass to get it to blend. It doesn't even have to blend all the way, just a little bit in order to uh, get it to not look like just a solid line, which it could look like a solid line, especially since it's so shiny. Something like that down here. I've just got the remnants on my brush with the light yellow and a little bit of the brass. Maybe just give myself a little highlight in through there. It's looking fancy now, now that we've got these shiny highlights on here. And then you can certainly, you know, put just these little sparkle highlights wherever you want. I'm going to definitely do a ton up in through here. So light yellow is going on. And I'm going to put this one right in through here. So light yellow, and then I blend it out with my brass color. So I just wipe my brush off. I might be able to just kind of lightly blend it like this and do everything that I want it to do. But if it, if it doesn't blend the way that I want, I can certainly pick up, like I feel like I want to pick up a little bit of the brass right now and get it to just blend down just a little bit. So you can, again, make it as shiny as you want. You could make it as solid as you want what you know again wherever your visual preference is is steering you i feel like i want a big highlight in through here i'm not putting it right at the top i'm not thinking of it as a highlight from a light source i'm thinking of it as a reflection on my shiny surface so as this shiny surface bends that's where it's going to pick up that light in in the surrounding atmosphere or surrounding areas or at least show that light to the viewer the most. So that's where I'm allowing for these bright bright highlights to happen. So that looks pretty good in through there. You could even clip it on the side, you know, maybe a little bit in through here if you felt that, you know, adding a touch of that highlight elsewhere would work. You it doesn't just have to be on one spot for that where that ribbon bends you could make it in several spots so i'm going to put this one up in through here and ride along this top edge in through here again doesn't have to be at the tippy top just where you feel that ribbon is bending the most so this one's going to get a pretty good one in through there i'm picking up some of my brass um, to get this to blend down I need to wipe my brush off because I have too much of the light yellow on there. And again, I don't necessarily want it to be a subtle blend um, I, or a, um, a, a blend that takes 
up along a wide area. This is, again, just intended to look really shiny. So it would probably, the shine would just happen in a, in a kind of a concentrated area. Picking up more of my um, light yellow. Well, I don't want these back ones to be as shiny. So I'm gonna go light yellow plus a little bit of the brass color. So maybe these back ones are a little um, duller and maybe a little bit in through here. And I'm putting it in the direction again that I feel that the, um, that the piece of ribbon is bending. So something like that works out pretty well. And I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. <laughs> I don't know how much more I need to do. I definitely need to put a little bit right in through here and just make sure that everywhere um, I can see the difference between everything. I think I want to put a little bit more of my brass color right in through here. I feel like the red has made it look like it's almost see-through and I don't want that to happen. So I'm eliminating some of that red shine, which I guess it would just be a personal preference. And then um, I think I'm also going to put Santa's beard back in that little spot. I don't like it. So I'm picking up some gray. I didn't say I was going to pick up gray, but I'm picking up some gray and then I'm going to pop in a little bit of brown. Yeah, that makes me happy. Sometimes you just got to, if you got to make a correction, just make a correction. It's all right. We all, we all have our process and that doesn't always go as perfectly as we had had planned on. And then I'm probably just going to fiddle with mine a little bit more. I might, I actually, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint with my yellow and just pop on just maybe one little sparkle here and there, maybe on this little piece, just little tiny additional sparkle. And then I might, you know, just let it dry and see if there's anything additional that I want to do. And then we're going to be using this same, um, small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small number three round brush. I'm gonna sign this in the bottom left with black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials but you could of course sign yours with your first name. You could make up a fun symbol. You could use your entire name. You could do whatever you want because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very festive holiday image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.